Good evening, everyone. Let me know if you can see me and hear me okay on Facebook and YouTube. I know I'm live on YouTube. I'm on a little bit early, but I just wanted to make sure everything was working. Let me check my other device here. How is everyone? Hey, Don. How are you? Been a long time, huh? Okay, so Facebook says I'm live, but I can't see it. And that's what happened last time. So maybe um, someone on Facebook can tell me if I'm live. Let's see if that does it. Give me just a minute to get everything set and then we'll get started, okay? If you have any questions, put them in the chat. And I am by myself, so I'm trying to get the Facebook feed up so that I can answer um, questions there too. And now I'm getting a phone call. That's not good. Hold on one second, guys. All right. Does anybody see me on Facebook? Can someone pop over there and let me know if they can see me? It says I'm live, but I cannot see it. It says live, though. Will we be in Vegas? Yes, I am going to Vegas. Um, I originally was not. But, um, yes, I decided, long story, anyway, I have my gloves on for my pour tonight, I don't want to get all messy. Uh, okay, does anybody on Facebook see me? Because I do not see it at all. It may, who knows, it may take forever for it to show up. Because it's still saying set it up. Okay, so let me, add, let me read some of the questions. Excited to catch this. Carrie says, thanks for sharing. Lincoln, Nebraska. Aaron is from California. Second order of see if he concentrates is shipped. Awesome. Clay share. Okay, so tonight we're going to do glass enamels. So it's not uh, the ceramic side of the business, but um, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, it says starting soon. Okay, it may just be because I'm a little bit early. Although I started the Facebook feed at... Um, 725 it should have started but thanks for checking on that for me this is what happened last time and then finally it just showed up and there was questions out there so i'm going to keep looking at my monitors since i don't have anybody else helping me not on facebook can't find it so you should be able just to click on the link that i put out there the invitation and it should go to the live feed Facebook feed says starting soon. Okay, thanks, Carrie. I appreciate it. Um, I don't know why it's doing that because it's set up. Hopefully, it'll, it'll plug back in. If anybody sees it, come back over on YouTube and tell me, and then I can look at the questions. Otherwise, I will go back and answer the questions after the live. Okay, so uh, most of you know I'm Paula McCoy owner of Colors for Earth, and tonight we're going to talk about the Colors for Earth glass enamels. The enamels are a dry powder. You mix them with a medium or a liquid. So tonight I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. Um, I did one real quick um, ahead of the broadcast just to kind of show you something fun and new, and uh, I'll duplicate it again. Okay, so if it shows up on Facebook, it shows up. Otherwise, I'll just have to, I'll just quit doing Facebook. It's been acting really weird. Hey, Eddie, thanks for joining. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to my overhead, and I'm going to show you what I did earlier. Uh, something just happened to my Facebook. I don't know why it did that. Okay, anyway, let's go to the overhead. Look at this one that I just did earlier. Isn't that fun? Crazy. So this has um, white. It has 336 purple sage and 355 mint julep in it. And I did torch it. So 
uh, like I said, there's a couple of ways you can do the pours. If you want the cells, does everybody know what I mean when I say cells? And this comes from the acrylic world. All those little tiny circles where it opens up and allows you to see another color underneath, that is what I call a cell. Okay? So the way to get those, um, the way I get them really well, is to always have white in it. And then I mix with layering mix as opposed to the medium. So this is a product that we carry. This happens to be a pint size jar. We have eight ounces also. Okay, and in the coming weeks, I'm going to show you another little trick to use that product with also. Um, hopefully it's going to be a demo at the glass show coming up. Okay, um, so I've mixed uh, in a cup what I did uh, and I'm labeled. I can't turn my cup sideways to show you, but what I did was I took four teaspoons of the white enamel the dry powder, okay, and then I put six teaspoons of the layering mix in it, and I'm just using just a regular, you know, disposable spoon. Whatever you do, just use the same measurements. Then I added a teaspoon of water to that. Then for the colors, I did two teaspoons of the powder, whatever colors you're going to use, and then I added a half a teaspoon uh, of the water to this after the layering mix so two and two on the colors the white tends and white is this way with the ceramic paint or anything it's the titanium that's in it it makes it thicker so it needs a little bit more so if you're measuring out on your spoon and you're scraping it off to be level then you put a level one of liquid I usually keep one spoon for dry one spoon for liquid and I always drop this liquid one in my water basin because the layering mix will harden and it's there. Okay, it's hard to get off. But isn't that a cool effect? So guess what I did that with? This little mechanism. So there, these are, I, I just got them. Okay, this is by Plaid. PlaidOnline.com this is their drizzle, folk art drizzle. And there's three different sizes you can see. So we're gonna set it down. I'll do another one with this. And then you pour the paint in it and it goes out the little holes on the side to create that pattern. And then I tilted it and moved it around and I even took a toothpick. So I'm gonna duplicate this on another piece so that you can uh, see how I did that, okay? Sunny, warm Arizona. Hi there, Oregon. Boy, it sounds like California is going to get more snow, is what they're saying. I heard on the news. Okay, so I've just got a, a container. This is, happens to be some ceramic glaze. But let me show you before I start. This is a pour in the background. This just has white and blue. I think I used 344 powder blue and the white enamel, and I just swirled it around after it was dry. Then I did some decorative work using the color concentrates. And then I put fired gold on it. You can kind of see that. So one of these pours I'm going to leave. And then the next time when we come back, I'm going to do some decoration like this. But it has to be completely bone dry. So that will be um, another live. Okay. So this is kind of cool. So even if you just keep it, it's basically you can make your own custom colored glass. Like the streakies, uh, the opal arts, any of that just by using your enamels. Now this one I did put on, what did I put it on? I think I did a clear and then I backed it with white. I like white. That tends, tends to be my best friend. All right, so this one is very similar um, to that purple. This one I just used blue, um, the, <coughs> excuse me, the 343 blue with the mint julep and the white again. And I made my square smaller and I backed it with kind of a mint colored. I use 96 COE, so that, but it's cheaper to of course use the clear. And it also gives it another, it looks like you've got something else there because of the shadow of the clear. Okay, so that's another way that you can do one. And, and that video is out there. That's one that I did a year, year and a half ago. This particular one is out there also. So I did the pour. It's on black glass. 
and then what I did was um, I fired that and I came back and I used the Larry mix mixed with the enamel the black enamel and I did brush strokes because when you do it with the layering mix it makes it a little more opaque and I can actually do strokes because if you've ever tried to take uh, color and brush stroke it on glass it just beads up it doesn't want to stay on there okay so that was and I explained that in this video and there's a playlist on the YouTube channel uh, for enamel pores you can check that out and see that now I want to show you one other piece well a couple others this one is similar to a pour but this is the balloon technique and this is out there as a video on YouTube so I put dots of color and then I smashed it with a balloon to create kind of that tie-dyed type look okay so there's another version <laughs> but similar and then two others everybody likes these so this again is um, on black and then I backed it with black I made the second piece uh, larger so I could have a rim so black gold two different grays like 304 305 and the white on that one very elegant um, great for a gift for men you know because it's not got the uh, pinks and purples in it like I normally do this particular one is also a, all of these are videos out there that you can go watch um, this one has I torched it but I also put some silicone in the color and it caused the cracking effect to kind of give you it kind of reminds you of earth you know the moon something like that it's very spacey looking did anybody find me on Facebook let me double check one more time and see if it I do not see it I don't understand okay so there's some examples some of you were asking me um, everybody loved that butterfly dish that I did with clay and wanted it to uh, be done on glass I'm gonna do that and I can do that on top of a pour so if you did just um, a white enamel pour let it completely dry then you could do the same stenciling process that I did on the clay onto the glass so I will do that um, in another live but you're welcome to try that no Facebook all right Nancy I don't know what the heck is going on because it's supposed to be on there but let me double check one more time before I get started so I like to put um, the foil underneath me <coughs> excuse me so it's like a foil pan real inexpensive it's like it doesn't want did I stop on YouTube something happened I just noticed that okay now it's back I'm not sure it's like it doesn't want me to broadcast to two at the same time so we're going with YouTube okay so here's another piece of glass this is just a three mil okay clean it with white distilled vinegar that is our preference for our products okay clean it with that if you have a another little trick I've said this a couple of different times if you have like a sticker um, a pricing sticker or something you can't get off your glass use the mr. clean sponges that you use in your kitchen just dampen it and then rub it and it'll come off um, and I did not come up with that uh, somebody somebody told me about that I don't I, it may have been Cheryl Thompson from across town I, I don't remember but I don't want to take credit for that all right so I'm gonna put this same little deal on there okay and then I'm gonna pour the colors in so before I'm gonna start with the white always double check that it's mixed up well I just the tool so I put like I said in this one I have four teaspoons of white enamel six teaspoons of layering mix let's mix up another color just because I want you to see it the mixing process um, let's do uh, what do we want to put in this one some silver maybe silver sparkle how about that for something different now the other thing is too when you're using the layering mix 
whether you're painting with it or you're doing pours, you cannot cap this until it's been fired once. Okay, so you have to do it on top or don't cap it. Okay, so I'm going to just estimate here. That's a little heaping, so that's one. And my tool is wet, and that's about two. Okay, so this is um, GS504, the Silver Sparkle. And then I'm going to get my layering mix, and I have some here in a squeeze bottle. It's easier for me to... I would recommend you get the 8 ounce squeeze bottle and then just if you use a lot of it do the pint to fill your squeeze. It's so much easier to control it. So I'm going to put one, two, and I'm going to give about a half because my color was a little heaping there. And then I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of water just because this is a small mix. If it's a larger mix, then I can do um, the teaspoon. So mix that up. If it seems thick, then either add a little bit more water or you can add more of the layering mix. It does tend to foam and bubble. That's kind of why I mix some of them up earlier because sometimes you need to just let that set. That looks pretty good. Was trying on Facebook. Okay, yeah, I don't know what's... I, it won't let me do both of them, I don't think, at the same time. It's it's being stupid again. Because um, every time I try to connect to it... Let me look at it one more time to make sure. I said I wasn't going to, but... Yeah, I think the problem is it won't let me do both of them at the same time. So I'm not going to screw this up. Okay, so I've got my silver. I've got a purple, 36, 53, or 55 mint julep, and my white. So I've pretty much got this in the middle. And I'm going to start with the white. And put quite a bit of it on there. You can see it kind of running out. And then let's do purple. Now watch what happens. Hopefully, you know what, let me turn on the side and the overhead so you can kind of see if we can get it up here where you can see it. Hmm. may have to move that. Okay, here we go. Ready? So when you put it in, do you see it coming out the side over there? Yeah, you can see it on the camera. So depending on how much you put in, now I'm going to do a little more white again, because that's going to create, see that pattern? Isn't that fun? And now I'm going to do some silver. Look at that. And let's grab some mint julep. Yeah, that side camera is acting weird. I think you can see it all from the overhead. I just have to move my hand out of the way. Okay, here we go. Let's see what that does to it. Okay, then you can come back with some more white. So I'm just alternating between them. Now see, this one's already running off the side, so I'm going to move that just a hair. And I'm going to go back to purple since I've got some. And a touch of silver. A touch. I'll just use what's there. And then I'm going to remove that. Put it in my water. Isn't that cool? Just as it is. And then you can tilt it. You can let it run off the side. That's why I put the gloves on. Because I knew it was going to be a mess. And I even tap it a little bit to bring it to the edges. If it's not wanting to go where I want it to go. So you can just bring it over. That's why gloves are great. And then you can take um, a toothpick or a brush. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, depending on what you use, it'll make different lines. Let's add a little 
bit of green in the middle since I've got some. So I can take a toothpick and I can pull it out like a tie-dyed kind of effect. So wherever you start that toothpick and you pull, then it's going to drag all of those through it. Fun. Looky there. Isn't that cool? It is fun. Yeah, so these new little tools, like I said, there's um, different sizes. There's larger ones in there with larger openings. And this is just the drizzle. Um, it's made for acrylics, okay? So it's plaidonline.com. And then drizzle is the technique that they use it for. So I can keep moving it or I can leave it. Now, the one thing you do want to do is take some, I mean, you could even set another piece on it and pull it off if you wanted. There's so many, your imagination is your limitation. I would try to clean whatever's on the bottom of the glass that's run over quickly because that's going to harden. Yes, you can get it off with the magic eraser later, but the more you do now, the less cleanup you have later. You will want to make sure that you clean the edges of the glass because as the glass melts, that clear edge is going to push out and any drips, you're going to see them exactly where they are. Okay. Okay. Hey, Cheryl. We got somebody from another country. Oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome. All right. So um, hopefully that um, gives you some ideas. I mean, you could keep going with this. We could actually... I don't have the silver one out. I have some glitz here, which is the burnished gold. Um, you can take and you could drizzle this on. You could splatter it on. I mean, so you could take other colors, you know. This is really, really thick. So I'm going to add some medium to it, which is our GM300. The glass medium. Okay, I'm going to mix it over here because as soon as I mix it over the top of that piece it'll and that's still pretty thick this is one that had dried up on me so um, I've had people ask what can you do to reconstitute it um, just use your glass medium so I think what I'll do is take the toothpick and I'll go into this okay and then I'll start here in the middle and bring another line out. Now I'm wiping off the toothpick onto my towel because I don't want to contaminate my product. But this is going to be just a fine, fine line. And I don't know if you can see it from there. Let me zoom in a little bit on it. You can kind of see they look kind of dark. So I'm going to start here and pull out, wipe off that excess. Start here and pull out. But you could take a brush, you could drizzle. So this is just kind of a little starburst type effect. So this is something that anybody can do. And I have people say, well, I'm not a glass painter. Well, you can do this. Trust me. It's, you can see, it's so easy. Let's do one more here. And then I'm going to put kind of a drop of it in the middle here. All right. Now, if you want to torch this, do we want to torch it? You guys tell me. To make it have the cells, the cells, I can't talk tonight. So remember, if you torch it, it kind of has the cells like this one. Okay. So glazed work of art so you may be doing ceramics this tonight is the glass enamels is what we're working with so what I tend to do because we have both products plus a brush company I alternate between all of those and you can even see some of it I don't know if I dropped a dot there but it's already kind of dispersing let me lift it up to the camera can you see that and I can keep moving it and every time I move it see it's going to change 
the flow of it but I'm going to torch it so you guys can see that okay so I'm going to use I'm going to get all that paint off of me um the creme blue brulee I'm not really good at saying that let me back back off so you can see the whole thing so this is a torch I set it kind of halfway in between as far as the uh, strength of the flame and I do stand up uh, when I do this so hopefully you can still hear me so you push on it one two and when you hold it the flame comes out okay stay four to six inches above the piece if you get too close to it it can scorch it and burn it if it burns you take a toothpick and lift that section off okay so now what I'm going to do is just do circles and I'll kind of tilt this can you see that right there it's pulling some of the purple from the line the green is going into the white and I don't stand in one area too long I want to keep moving so what you're doing is drying the top surface and it's pulling some of that color from underneath is what it's doing and creating kind of a web type look and mingling the colors the longer you stay in an area, then it starts to dry it out more. So I like to just do a smooth, continuous circle. Of course, you can go either way. And at least four inches above. You'll know if you scorch it, trust me. All right, let's see what happens here in the middle when we do this. I'm not sure what it, I've never put the glitz on there before. So it may totally make that go away. But it does take time to do this. You can't hurry it. You just have to do a little bit at a time. And as long as it's wet, it will continue to change. Now, you do want to make sure that your plastic cups underneath you are not near your flame or you will melt them. Okay. Just FYI, as I went around that side, I noticed my cups were there. But see how that's changing already? the torch is mysterious yeah it's just they use it for food when they torch food um like i said it's uh, one of those creme blue creme blue i can't say it anyway a fancy dessert <laughs> never tried it but it's just that's what it's listed under like this is from amazon you do need the butane to put in it and I'll show you where that goes in one second. I didn't bring the butane out here, but I'll show you. Okay, so see what it's doing to that glitz? It's moving it around and causing it to have a different pattern. So the more you work it, the more it's going to change. It's kind of cool. Tie-dyed. 70s right <laughs> now when I do this for long periods like right now my hand is starting to cramp because I've had carpal tunnel so keep that in mind as you're working okay remember that the tip of this is hot so you don't want to lay it down on anything you want to stand it on a surface that if it falls over it's not going to catch something on fire okay but can you see how what it did and I just tilted it and made it run over here on me clean off those edges that's why we have gloves on now all of this X and I did tape um, I videotaped the first piece that I did too so that I could share that with you later but it's the same process um, I just did it let's look at it and I did dry this with a fan a little bit but let's look at it next to it so it's a little bit more white. I didn't put the silver. This one has silver. This one doesn't. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Let me get that light so you can see. Okay. So dry it with a fan. Um, then make sure your edges and everything is clean. So when you clean your edges, I just like to use these toothpicks. And I seesaw it back and forth. Uh, let me switch this out that's the problem with this you you don't have enough space and this one is extremely wet so hang on one second let me 
So you have all this excess laying down on your tray. What I did earlier was I just took a piece of glass and I laid it into it. So, and this had something else on the other side of it, but I could do that again. I can just take it and lay it on there and then pick it up and you have a whole nother pattern. Okay. So you could do pieces of jewelry or little scraps that you might have. That would be a way to, to use that up. Or you can let this dry and then it'll pop off of there and you can actually put it onto another piece of glass. Okay. So you can, no waste is what I'm trying to tell you, no matter what, you, you can do it different ways, okay? So when you get ready to clean the edges of it, <coughs> now where did I put my tooth? Q-tip. So I just take, and I seesaw that back and forth. This one's not completely dry, but you get the idea so that there's nothing there. And then when it, I flip it over and I double check, this is not completely dry. So I'm not going to do that, but I'll save this one and I'll actually come in um, on a live in a couple of weeks and carve through some of this and create like a big flower and some leaves out of this. Okay. So that'll be fun to do. It is fun. It is fun to do. I put the glass underneath. Yeah. So this is a double thick. So this is six mil. The other one is three mil. But you could always put another piece, like I did on that one, where it was larger, okay, a, a piece of glass that would accent whatever colors you're using. Just make it a quarter of an inch larger that gives you an eighth inch frame around there, and that's a nice way to frame it, okay? How do you put the dried enamel onto another piece? So once it dries, and I don't know that I have a piece down here that's dry. But it'll just pop right off of here. Okay, so, okay, like, there's a piece. I don't know that I can pick it up. I'm trying to get it with, nope, it's not going to let me. Um, just pick it up, there, like that, and you would just set it down on your piece of glass, Brit. Okay, and then you can take a little bit of the glass medium and kind of smear it on your glass and then put these down. You could, you know, reach underneath and get them with a toothpick and then move them over. Um, that'll just hold them in, in place, okay? Don't get them real damp, but you should just be able to lay it and just smooth on a smeared coat of the GM300, okay? But it's a way to use all those little drips and drizzles and not have to um, waste it, is what I'm saying, okay? All right, so let me put this one out of the way. And I thought we'd do one more. Does anybody have any questions so far? Oh, what do you use to catch the drip? This, this is just a foil baking pan from Amazon. It's like, it's like tin foil, but a little bit stiffer. You can buy them really cheap on Amazon. Uh, but anything, you could just put down wax paper, just something to protect your area so you can get it off. Wax paper, these will just peel right off of the wax paper to use later. <coughs> Does that make sense? Hopefully. All right. So I have a piece of black here. And what I thought I would like to try, we'll leave these over here, is, um, so let's, I'm going to step backwards. So the G series color. So this is G301, just as an example. You don't want to mix the G series with the GT series, okay? The GTs, meaning glass toxic, meaning they have cadmium in them. You need to do reverse or you have to fire them first and then you come back and you cap them, okay? So you don't want to mix the non-toxic and toxic together. They don't work well together. So on that one big piece, this one, I use the orange and red and that was the uh, GTs, but that's all I put on there, okay? So I thought I would do one with that, or we can do one with just all metallics. What do you guys want to do? You want to see the red, yellow, and orange? See, these would be the colors, and this jar has got something on it. But anyway, red, yellow, orange, or do you want to do metallics on the black? 
now what am I going to do with them? Okay, so Anne's asking, she's from the acrylic world, so what I do is um, I will come back and either carve or I put another piece of glass behind it. And I was showing that one. And so you can make a little dish out of them. I mean, you can do anything. I may, um, actually, I want to do the light fixtures in my classroom here. And so I may make an individual uh, light fixtures. Metallics. Okay. Anybody else? Metallics, metallics. Okay. We'll do metallics. All right. So we have... 503, which is the gold sparkle. We have 501, which is white sparkle. 502 is copper. Did I miss one? And silver. Okay, so white, silver, copper, and gold. All right, so we need to mix those up. And I just got stuff on here. So while I'm mixing, I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to come over here and... I've already got silver in this cup. We'll have to mix up some more. But that's okay. That's the problem. There's never enough room. Anybody else have that problem? <laughs> Is it just me? <laughs> Probably just me. It's hard to get everything where the camera is. Okay, I'm drying this spoon off so that we have a completely dry one. So that's a 8 inch circle. So let's do some copper. So that's about a spoon, even though it's heaped. I'm going to do two of each one. Um, with the layering mix, and I'm not going to put layering mix in this. I'm going to do this one. I probably didn't need that much. I'm going to do this one just with the uh, regular glass medium to show you the difference. It's more fluid. Um, now, you can't torch it, but... You can still do other things. Okay. Metallics. Okay. Good. All right. Here we go. I'm going to add some to this. I still have some left, so I'm just going to add one to that. And if I'd been smart, I would have got a whole bunch of spoons. The metallics tend to leave a residue on the spoon, so just keep that in mind. Here's gold. This happens to be our two ounce size containers. The others are the regular 28 grams or one ounce size. I'll probably end up with a whole bunch of this left over. And then I'll have to go get some more glass and have to create something else, right? You have the whole basement not enough room. Yeah, well, no matter how much room you have, I think you always want more or think you need more, right? <laughs> or at least I do. The more space you have, the more you fill it up, and then the more room you need. So, okay. So, I'm going to do the glass medium this time. So, I'm going to get my spoon, make sure that... So, and I don't have a piece of glass I can do this on, but think of it, if you had clear glass and you mix just the medium what you could do is create um, that real wispy white by thinning it down even more than what we're going to thin so I'm going to do two teaspoons so in equal parts with these And sometimes there's, like, the copper and gold, you may have to add a little bit extra just because it tends to be a little thicker than the others. But we'll mix it, and I'll show you that together so you understand. Sometimes it's by feel, um, meaning after you mix it, you'll understand. All right, so this was equal parts, and it's going to be thick. See, it's already thick 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 so I'm pushing it against the side because I want to make sure that all of those granules are blended and broken up it's kind of like when you're baking a cake and you've got the cake mix and the liquid 
you got to make sure you get to the bottom and get everything stirred up well. Same principle applies here. So I'm just smashing it. I know that doesn't sound good. Now that's pretty, see that? That's pretty thick. So I'm going to just eyeball. It's kind of like I'm going to add another, easily another half a teaspoon. Because I want it to be fluid. The other thing is you could put a coat of the medium on the glass and then add this and everything would move around really nice. So there's, there's so many different, you know, ways you can do this. Like I said, your imagination is your limitation. Uh, the white, it tends to be a little more coarse or chunky. But if I'd had them all mixed up, then you wouldn't know how to mix them, right? So that's why I wanted to do some of it in front of you so that you understand and you feel more comfortable when you're doing it. Now, the layering mix, anytime you add the layering mix to any of the enamels, I'm going to add just a little bit more into this. Can I clarify why to torch? Yeah, torching makes the cells, TJ. So, um, otherwise you won't get, you'll see, I can leave this one without torching. But you saw that other one before I added the torch. It was just kind of that tight-eyed look. And when I torched it, it brought out all those little circles or cells, I call them. That's what they call them in the acrylic world. So that's why I use that torch. Just for another effect. You don't have to. You can just uh, use the um, straw or that little tool. You can blow them around. You can tilt it. And see how thick that's almost like toothpaste so i'm going to add about another teaspoon so that's three teaspoons of medium to two teaspoons of the powdered copper better it's still a little thick so see it's hard because every color it depends on the you know the different makeup of the color how it reacts a lot of time with whatever you're mixing with what it's going to do so one may be a little bit thicker than the other so you'll just have to play with them but you need it to be able to pour on okay so that's now i did not add i did not add any water to these i can um that's just going to make it more translucent see that one's really thin it won't even hardly stay so see, the silver's thin, the other ones tended to be thicker, and they needed more medium. I'm not going to add any more to that. So that's a 50-50. The other ones are like two powder to three liquid, we'll say. I thought you said not to torch it. You aren't using any... I'm not using any layering mix on this one. I'm just using the GM300. Correct. So... We can try to torch it and see what happens. Usually it's the water and the layering mix that helps with that cell activation, so to speak. Um, but I don't mind. I got plenty of glass. Okay. So do we want to use... Let me show you another... Um, this is something I didn't take the wrapper off so you could see it. This is another one of their drizzle pours from plaid so you would pour different colors in here and then when you pour it out they would come out at the same time so there's another one um, I don't want to do anything because I you're going to waste your product because um, I got these to work with enamel they also have these little doodads that you set it in the middle and then let it fall off and it creates a pattern because it's trying it goes down in the the lower areas so that's another way you can do it. Do, do we want to try this one on this? What do you guys think? Or do you want me to just pour it? Tell me what you want to do. You want to try this? Here's another one. This one has a triangular shape, which would give you a little bit different pattern. These all come, there's four different ones in here. So these are bigger. So if you were doing like a larger piece okay so what they recommend is you set it in the middle of your piece pour your product over it and then it comes out and do you see all the waste here yeah i'm not willing to 
it costs too much money to waste that much. Acrylics are much cheaper. Try it. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to use the one that has the triangular form to it. So back, I don't know if I completed my sentence. Back to the layering mix. If you have anything, any of the enamels you mix with the layering mix, you need to first vent it to 1100 degrees. Vent your kiln. Just put like a little half inch post and anything, if it's something that you can put that piece closer to, like if you have a clamshell closer to where the venting will happen. Okay, so if this was my kiln shelf, I would want to move this because I have a clamshell. So I want to move it over this way so that it's closer to where it's venting. It lets all those um, gases get out of the layering mix. Okay, vent it to 1100 and then close it down. Do not cap anything that's with layering mix. Okay, now I can come back on those other two pieces because I use the layering mix and I can paint on top of them. But this one, because it's only mixed with the medium, the moment I touch that, if I try to come back and paint on top, it's it's going to loosen up the enamel and it's going to probably pull back to the original glass. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're doing that. And I'll repeat that again. All right, let's start. Let's start with the copper. All right, you ready? Here we go. Let's see what happens. See what kind of a pattern it's going to create. And I'm going to go white. See, most of my product will probably be left on top of this mechanism instead of... Then I'm going to go gold. It's going to take a lot. Probably more than I'm willing to put in here. I'll go back with copper. White. These are all sparkles. Silver. I think my table's a little lopsided. It's tending to go to the other. And let's go gold. Ta -da. Now, this has, you can take off the top. Um, you know what, though? I think I'm going to just push this off so that I don't waste all of that. Nothing like experimenting with you guys. All right, let's see if I can. I'm going to drop that in my water basin. So you got a different pattern. And now I can take it. Now I can either leave it organic and not go all the way out to the edge. Of course, I just put my glove right there. Um, or I can go all the way out to the edge. Either one, okay? Or I can get it as close as possible, and then I can take a toothpick. This does, okay, so one advantage that I can see to using this type of thing is it does disperse most of it evenly, because sometimes when you put color, like I've done in other ones, then you have these gaps, and um, you have to go back and fill them in. So there is an advantage to this. Now, remember what I said you can take and just tap, tap. So if you've got an area that's not getting all the way over to the edge, see how you can do that without tilting it and causing you to lose a bunch of it. So we'll get it covered first, and then we'll come back and create more patterns. So now you know why disposable gloves are much easier to clean up, right? All right. Let's see what we got. Anybody else got questions? Changed my mind. Oh, yes, you can 
for because I don't have any of the oh <laughs> okay so again you can go you can take your stir your stir tool and you can create you know design watch me knock it off of here so if you've got just don't do what I call Texas tornadoes you want to do like figure eights or S's which are fun you start doing circles and you make a muddy mess so I'm just trying to pull some of it through that silver kind of sticks out like a sore thumb to me so I want to bring some of those colors you can go from different directions I'm wiping off my tool on my um, paper towel here just because I don't want to put down a blob of yucky color okay all right so I think we need a little I think I got a couple of drops of gold left let's put some of that in the middle and maybe some white if I can get any out of here So it does use a little bit more product than you would if you're just painting. So make sure you have enough mixed up for the surface. Now it'll stay wet quite a bit um, if you need to mix up more. I mean it's going to take hours for this to dry. Okay. Kind of cool. So it's kind of bleeding i don't know if you can see, over here in this white area can you see it's already got like little dots so the copper or gold that's around it is already bleeding into that white so it's almost forming and we're going to watch this i'm going to zoom in just a little bit more can you see how it's already forming those little circles in the white you can see it basically one color is under the other and it's merging and melting so to speak into it which is kind of cool adding more color in this area. yeah it just because remember that little uh, that area was like a two by two that was covered and the color kind of ran underneath it so you'd need to kind of disperse it a little more I'm trying to get some of that silver up there. So on this one, I think it would be fun to carve back through to the black. Um, and I would just have to wait till it dries and then just kind of look. This is almost like a floral. Um, it could be almost like a fuchsia, but it's done in metallics, of course. So this is actually doing some cell breaking up on its own over here on this side by my thumb that's moving. I can't tilt this to show it to you, um, but I'm very pleased with it. And, and we could torch it if you want. Do you want me to torch it or do you want me to leave it? All right, you guys tell me. Torch it or leave it. You can see it, Bobby? Okay, good, good. Yeah, this is really fun. I mean, it's fun. It's very elegant looking. And like I said, the black and gray is a nice one for, um, you know, a guy's gift. So do you want me just leave this that way? You, let's leave it. That way we can see the difference. Um, so we used the metallics, all of the GS series. GS standing for glass. S is for the sparkle. Okay, leave it. Okay. And we mixed all of these colors with the GM300. Okay. Start with equal parts. Some of the colors we added an extra teaspoon. Um of the medium just because it was too thick so it needs to freely move you'll know if you have it too thick because you won't be able to tilt it and move it it just kind of sits there and drags okay yeah i like that that's pretty cool i'll probably cut a um a larger black like i did for that other one where it's got a little bit of a rim on it so like i did on this one all right let's back off so this one I cut that rim bigger. That's probably what I'll do for this just to accent it. I think it makes it nice looking. Okay. And that one that I added the silicone to, I'll show you what I used. 
I don't have a lid for this, but I use that GAI cutting oil. It's kind of a lubricant is what it is. I think AAE glass, um, although it says glassaccessories.com. So if you add that, that way you're going to get that cracking effect. Okay, that was added to my mix. So you mix up your colors the same way and then you can add a little bit of that and it causes it to crack and pull away kind of like uh, the earth. Okay, any other questions on this? Pat said, hi there from Virginia. How are you? All right, I'm going to take my gloves off. All right, let me switch over to me. Okay, so that's kind of fun to do. There's so many variations. One of the things I would say is uh, no more than five colors on a piece um, because it gets really muddy at that point. So always start with your light and then work yourself up to your dark. Okay, that's my rule of thumb. That's what I do with everything, whether it's ceramic or glass. That's what I've always done. Um, the black rim is gorgeous. Yeah, that's one of my favorite pieces. I, I, everybody keeps wanting to buy it and I won't sell that one. But it's easy to make. And when I cut my circle to go around that, I only had like a 12 inch and I needed a 10, I think it was. And I cut it and didn't even break the glass. I was so proud of myself. I posted that. That's been many years ago. Okay, so layering mix, you have to, if you're using layering mix to mix your enamels with, you have to vent to, some people say 800, I do 11 just to make sure, 1100. You need to get those gases, those organics out of there. So have it closer to, if you have a clamshell, have it closer to the front of the kiln where that opening is going to be. Um, vent to 1100 and then close it. I just use a little half inch post when I do that. Then you can cap it after that. Okay, um, if you want it, because the layering mix tends to make it a little satiny, not quite as high gloss. You could come back and just sift cleared powdered frit over it and refuse it and you're, you're good to go. So you could take these to, to set the color just to 1380. So go like 350 per hour up to 1380, hold for 10 minutes. You got to the maturing point of the enamels for the colors for earth enamels. And then you can come back and add that. It won't distort the piece. You can add that piece to your second layer of glass, whether it's a color or another sheet of, you know, white, whatever you're going to put behind it. Or if you're going to cap it, you can do that at that time. If you cap it, no matter if you're using layering mix or the medium, the glass medium, I sift clear powdered frit all over my piece every time I fire glass that's two layers or multiple layers all over and one more time around the edge that lifts that edge up so that all the gases can get out all the organic and it's going through all those little beads of your powdered frit and then it can close in the middle and then seal the outside edge okay and take it to your full fuse if you have a kiln vent is that enough you know what Brenda I don't know I'm not fortunate to have one of those um, it's the oxygen. I don't think that's because you don't have it on when you're firing. Do you, you just have that on later. I would say I would still vent it because what happened, the oxygen needs to get, well, you need to vent that. If you're using the GTs, remember I told you the, the GT colors, these need to be vented also. <coughs> and you have to open that up, but I don't. You need, especially on the GTs, you need to vent it to achieve the color. If you don't and you get it on too thin, you can actually get blacking and gray color instead of um, the actual red, yellow, and orange. What was the piece you poured with the plaid thing? Okay, so hold on. I did it on both of these. This is one... Oh, let me go back. I <laughs> put it under the camera and the camera's not there. So this is one that I did before I started the live. I did tape it so I can put it up later. Okay. So that one was using that little mechanism. And then the one that I just did, and hopefully I don't spill this on top of this one because it's very, this one is done with it also. This is using that flatter form. 
okay one used the flat one and one used the other you can go back and and watch those they're both in my water basin so I'm not going to pull them out of there okay um, hopefully that makes sense it, it is very cool it, it's very cool all right so um, let me go back to me so I know some people have uh, they may not know how to get to different things on the website since I did this pretty quickly I was going to show you that real quick so here's the website the it's listed at the bottom of my screen there okay so if you're looking for anything to do with the enamels if you go up here to the education and you have a drop down menu okay so free techniques you can go look at those the video tutorials if you click on that these are playlist that's on the YouTube channel oops I knew I'd do that okay so if you want to do ceramics here's enamel pours if I click on that button it's gonna take me to a list on YouTube and there's the one at the top that had the black and the red okay and then here's another one the earthy looking one here's one with coppers and browns and so there's multiple ones out there to watch okay so that's how you get to the different YouTube or you go to YouTube and just go to the playlist okay so here is YouTube and if you don't know over here is the playlist and then it has all the different lists and you can see all the different so if you want to watch every video there's 133 different videos there's five on Murini seven on Porsche so you can go look at those specific categories and as I come up with different things I'll have new categories if you're wanting brush strokes whatever the case may be okay all right um, also here is some different glass pieces that are made with our enamels some of them the rainbow vase in the upper right hand corner is one that I did a few weeks back that gold coppery looking one in the left hand corner is a pour that I did probably over a year ago so that one's out there if you like that combination that look you can go watch uh, that one and then those are just some others the uh, vase and the flowers another one and then the others the sunflower one is I don't think I have that one completed out there for you and then some of the others are techniques that you can uh, get okay all right so let's go back here all right so hopefully that helps you navigate to YouTube or from the website what you're trying to find because I know I have a lot of questions about that is there any other questions you like the effects Brett good good it, it's uh, it's fun to do I mean you can get tied up in it and just really lose let's look at this again let me change it over so you can see how it's separating you can see they're tinier little areas and I'm not sure it's going to show up on camera until it's actually dry and you can see it okay all right any last questions uh, we do have um, a couple of enamel pour kits on the website uh, we made them up for Janine Stillman when she was uh, teaching classes with them and for the show so you might check those out and see if they got colors in them you like um, I, I think there's medium in there there's layering mix so look at those okay and see if uh, if it appeals to you okay all right any last questions this kind of reminds me of the balloon thing yeah it's very close to it but a little bit different effect remember the balloon one was more of spots okay this is the balloon one and there's there's a video on this one and there's a whole bunch of different color combinations that I did uh, when I created that one okay so you can take a lot of the ideas I mean I watch what people are doing in the acrylic world and think okay how can we do that on glass or ceramic so my next thing is to be able to figure out how to do a ceramic pour um, I think I know how I'm gonna do it but um, it'll probably be after the glass show so my next event if you're coming to the glass expo and I'll be putting out information on that it's in Las Vegas it's the last weekend of the month or the first weekend of April it's that Friday Saturday Sunday um, we will be out there for a three-day event at the South Point Hotel and Casino which is off the strip 
So I will put that information out. If you're not, say you're not a glass person, but you're close to that area and you want to come and see it, um, and you need something, pre-order it. If you pre-order, I'll give you 20% off. You got to call it in and do it over the phone because I can't do anything over the website. So even if you wanted just color concentrates, which I'm going to have there because we use them on glass, but if you want something specifically to make sure I have it, you need to pre-order it. Okay. All right. And it would be a fun trip to Vegas, right? Let's just hope. I hope I can get there with all this snow and stuff. We've got a long time to go, but that, uh, you know, going through Flagstaff from Texas is uh, tricky every year. So anyway. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thanks for joining me. And I can't wait to see what you guys create. Don't forget, if you are and you have bought the glass enamels, you can ask to join the glass closed Facebook group, which is CFE for Colors for Earth glass color artist cfe glass color artist you have to answer the questions or i'm not going to approve you okay i have to know all those things i'm glad you enjoyed it all right okay guys oh did we have another question if there is any concern with the thickness of the enamel liquid on the glass you know what um it should level out good question uh, it should level out. So if you see thick and thin, then you've either got the th product still too thick. But as, And when I went through it with the toothpick or the tool to move it, everything closed back up. So that tells you it's a proper consistency. Um, white would be the only thing that you have to really watch out. If you get real heavy with the white, you could have some pulling back. You can always touch it up and refire it. But that's the only one that I've really had any problems with. You are welcome. All right. Good night, guys. I've been working night and day for three weeks now, and I'm exhausted. I'm going to take the night off. <laughs> take care. I'll see you next time.